So this is a simple brush just for creating sci-fi panels and that kind of thing. Just press B and hit load brush or go to the brush menu and hit load brush or put it into the following folder and it'll be there every time you start said brush. I'm going to start off with a simple dynamesh object here just to show you the technique. All we're doing basically is inserting simple shapes in to cut out from a dynamesh object. So by default, if you select one any one of these and you click and drag onto your object, if you press shift, it will default to the last rotation of your gizmo. So if that's incorrect and it's not straight the way you'd like it, um, all you need to do is just press W to go into your gizmo. You'll see that it was rotated that way. Hold down Alt and reset your gizmo position. We can now undo the inserting of that. Go back, press Q to go back to draw mode. And the next time we draw this in and we hold Q, it'll snap into a, a flat view. So this is actually drawing the brush on, but we still need to split it out in order to use a live boolean. So having a live boolean on right now does nothing. We need to hit split unmasked points. That will take this, pop it underneath this, so we can just change it into subtractive mode and we're done. If we hit split mask points, it would put it above and we'd have to change the order of this. So it's basically just one click less to hit the split mask points. Turn this on into subtractive mode and turn on live boolean. Now you'll see when we select this, as long as we have shift F turned on, polyframe turned on, we'll actually see what's happening in the viewport here. So we can move this, that's it turned on. We can move this and we can see the effect of this in the viewport. If you want to scale this, we can scale it. I'd be careful how much you scale it because the width will change more than the height. Um, but So an, an easier or a better way to do this really would be to, I'll turn off perspective for a moment, just hold down Control and Alt, select the, the points that you want to move and we'll have a look at this from the side. As we move this over, we'll basically be filling that gap. The same for the other side, Control Alt, basically selecting all of these verts along this line and pulling them over. That gives us a clean cut. We can move this up or down, um, move the whole thing up or down uh, and scale it out if we want to. If you want to just take the points at the back again, take those, move them out, and you know you'd be making your cut all the way through the back. Um, if you do want to break it up a little bit more, uh, because this is a simple object, you could just basically go out of live boolean mode, go into isolation mode, uh, use your Z modeler brush, select this, and now that you have an, an extra point here, you can move these verts down. I'll turn off this turn live boolean back on and we can move these cuts anywhere that we like in whatever position. So if these cuts don't suit, just basically reposition them to where you want them to be. Uh, one last thing is, I'll move the whole thing down a little bit, is uh, bevel. So we can use, if we go to geometry uh, underneath crease here, you'll see bevel and you can change the width of that and you can get little bevels on these corners here if that's a look that you're going for. Um, also, if you press D, you'll get rounded curves because it does support subdivision. Like So if that's not quite enough subdivision, it's looking a little bit blocky there, we can increase the subdivs to three or four to smooth that out if you're looking for a smooth look for whatever reason on your panels. I'll turn this off. Um, we can add as many of these as we like because they all have separate poly groups. Um, even though we turned the bevel on now, uh, I'll go back to my BEI panel cuts. We we'll choose another panel and because we're still on this uh, subtracted tool, all we need to do is put these in, scale them up, fit them to our mesh basically, make this one wide just for the sake of it. And we can see how this is actually going to cut into our mesh. Maybe push that out all the way to the back. To get those cuts there. Uh, as I said, these are individual polygons so, or individual polygroups. So just press W and then Control tap on one, and you'll get that as a polygroup. If you, if not, if you've started getting because you've used bevels, you start getting different polygroups. Just auto groups this, and then you can Control tap on either one to move whichever one you want back again. Shift F turning this on and off to see which one you're moving. And that's pretty much it. So from here on in, um, after you've got your bevels, whether you're using, or after you've got your cuts, whether you're using bevels or not, 
just press B, I use any other IMM boolean brushes that you might be using to do little switches and doodads and um, again which will be automatically masked so you can just move them as soon as you've placed them uh, remember to be back in draw mode before you change one to something else uh, otherwise you'll just keep on updating them and don't forget with these that if you the size of your of your brush um, if you start drawing one if you hold down control it will stay the size of the of your brush so if you want to make sure that you have regularly sized pieces on this that's the way to do that um, but yeah we can cut in whatever shapes uh, you want to do on your and again if if this rotation is wrong it's simply because your your rotation was wrong on here so hold down alt click on this undo the placement again press q and then the next time now you'll get a straight be it front or, or side um, so yeah from here make your insert mesh tools and um, if you want to do stuff like cuts like this do that and then if you want to add one just go back to your original one put this on actually put this on place it by hand uh, and if you want to expand it from this point here we just press W tap it there and then that way we can kind of push it back here start creating these shapes so from here just make your own make your own sci-fi panels so if you go back to this brush then you'll see in the brush edit brush credit you'll see my youtube channel with other tutorials that i do hope this helps and do let me know if you have any further suggestions for improving it thanks bye